Last week, we talked about the importance of taking useful notes, and now we will look at how to cite those sources of information. There are three main styles used in college research. The APA, developed by the American Psychological Association. The MLA, was developed by the Modern Language Association. And the Chicago Manual of Style was established by the Chicago Tribune. Let's consider why you even need to provide a citation for anything. First, most people agree to give credit to the person who created, discovered, or developed an idea. And most students try to avoid the dishonesty of plagiarism. But the most important reason is to provide the original source of the information for others building on your research. For example, if someone is using an idea mentioned in my research project, they would need the original source of the idea, not my interpretation. One goal of your college education is to prepare you for a profession, and you will need to understand and use professional literature. You should also expect to contribute to your profession after graduation and share your experiences with others in your field in journal and magazine articles. So this is an important part of your professional development. What should be cited? The basic rule of thumb is to cite anything that you borrow. As you progress through your studies, many ideas will become common knowledge with you and your peers, but if it is new to you, cite it. Make sure the source information is in your notes and ready to include in your work cited or reference list, and include the specific page number within your project. When compiling your research, you will have to determine if it is best to quote, paraphrase, or summarize the information. But the most important idea is to include the source information in your notes and in your research. A confusing part about citation styles is that professions and disciplines have developed the style that works best for their publications. So, while students choose their degree and profession, it is the area of study that determines the citation style you will use. The APA style is used in many sciences including psychology and health sciences and education. MLA style is used by most of the humanities and the arts. The Chicago Manual of Style is used in history and many social sciences such as sociology and political science. Another confusing aspect about citations is that material formats are changing and researchers need to cite the format of the material in the style used by the profession. For example, when internet websites were developed, each profession had to decide how to cite the new formats, including videos, websites, and blogs, and they are still changing. For this reason, it is important that you learn to use the current edition for your program that specifies how to cite and use materials in all formats available. In 2020, APA published the seventh edition of their style. In May 2016, MLA released the eighth edition of their handbook, and in 2017, the 17th edition of the Chicago Manual of Style was published. The first step in citing a source is to recognize the format of the source. For many, it is easy to identify the source as a book, especially when compared to other sources. However, there are books written by the same author throughout the publication, and there are edited books where each chapter is written by a different author and is a separate source. There are commentaries with side notes written to help understand an author's ideas, especially useful for classic literary works and spiritual texts. Government documents are developed by government agencies to inform their constituents about general guidelines, policies, and standards of operations. And there are different types of periodicals, and their article citations are determined by the publication format. In addition, there are rules about formatting authors' names, titles, 
and publisher information. All of this can get complex. Here are samples of the same article citation using the different styles. Notice that each starts with the author's name, but APA uses only the author's initials, and Chicago and MLA use the author's full name. APA has the year of publication in parentheses after the author's name. Chicago omits the parentheses around the year. MLA leaves the year as part of the issue designation later in the citation. For the article title, APA only capitalizes proper nouns and the first word in both the title and the subtitle. All other words are lowercase. Both MLA and Chicago put the article title in quotation marks, and each major word in the title is capitalized. In fact, in the MLA and Chicago manuals, there is a list of words that are never capitalized, except if the first word of a title. The name of the journal is next in each style, and APA, MLA, and Chicago put the journal name in italics, and all major words are capitalized. MLA provides labels for the volume, issue, and page numbers, but APA and Chicago use punctuation to denote what they are, like a special code. APA requires the use of a Digital Object Identifier, or DOI number, if available, whether the article is in print or an online publication. Though MLA and Chicago only want the DOI if that is the format used. When citing information from books, each of the styles share more similarities. Still, note the differences in punctuation, use of italics, and capitalization. These minor differences make a big difference in professional publications, so pay attention to details. By the way, all of these citations in this video are from my imagination. They are not actually published sources. The citation style manuals have the rules and explanations for manuscripts submitted for professional literature, which includes citation and reference styles, in addition to margins, abbreviations, language, and other publication requirements. In the section on reference lists, the guidelines for each source type include the general information about formatting authors' names, whether a single author, multiple author, corporate author, or no author. Then the rules about titles are presented, and then on to publisher, and so on. Each citation style has rules for each type of publication format, and you should be able to recognize a book from a journal article or other source by the order and elements of the citation. For example, only a book has publisher information, and a journal uses only the year and the date, while a magazine has the complete date. As you explore your citation style, you will become familiar with the requirements for each type of source and be able to identify them. The table of contents at the beginning of the manual is helpful to locate the rules for your source, but the index can direct you to the specific page or section. For example, in the category of periodicals, there are subcategories of journal, magazine, newspaper, and other periodicals, and in the manual there are examples of each and there are online and print issues for each one as well. The same is true for books, with the general rules at the beginning of that section, then the rules get more specific to a single title or multi-volume work. Book chapters may be from a book authored by the same people, or an edited book with individual chapters written by different authors. If there is an element that is not addressed in the section for a particular type of source, you need to refer to the more general directions. For most sources, there is an example to follow, in addition to the explanation of the rules. The Internet and electronic formats have changed many aspects of documenting sources. 
Just remember the basic rule that a citation is determined for the format of the source as published, not how the material is accessed. So, a journal article will always follow the documenting rules for journals, whether it is an online source or in print format. There may be additions to the citation, such as a DOI or URL for online sources. These are subordinate to the rules for a specific format. I know this can be confusing. We will work with many source types to work this out. On the ISU Library webpage, there is a link to many citation help pages for APA, MLA, Chicago, and other styles. Use them. I have posted several on Moodle and will add more as I find them. Also, please send me any citation help pages that you have found useful. Meanwhile, remember that citation styles can be full of painstaking details. Even the professionals have to use the manuals, so just relax and follow the rules. You will need to contact your advisor or an instructor of the upper division courses in your program to find out what is used for your degree program. I suggest you start using the citation style of your program as soon as possible. Some instructors will require you to use MLA or APA because that is what they have learned, and it is important to learn to interpret citations in any format. However, using the same style throughout your college career will help you in all your research projects. Feel free to contact me for assistance. I'm available.